Hello children, let me welcome you to the virtual class of the Brihan Mumbai Mahanagar Palika. My name is Shraddha teacher. Children, we are in the middle of this COVID-19 pandemic and because of that we are not able to go to school but that doesn't mean we are going to stop learning. So we are going to do many lessons which are very interesting from your textbook through the virtual class here. So let us do a lesson in English today. So children, today let us uh, continue the lesson that we were doing last time in standard 9th, a subject was English. The lesson that we are talking about today is lesson number 3.2 from your English textbooks that is reading works of art. And we are going to do the second part of this lesson today. Okay, so in the previous part of the lesson, we talked about the two parts which are there in this lesson. So, one part was about a very famous uh, painter, uh, Sayyid Heather Raza. We talked about his life, we talked about his work, we also talked about how his paintings are unique from the other painters of his times. We also talked about the Gond people, uh, that is a Gond tribal people and how they painted and what are the different things that they wanted to depict in their painting. So, we tried to read these uh, works of art which are totally contrasting from each other. That is the artwork of Sayyid Raza is in total contrast with the artwork of uh, the other tribals that is the Gon people. Okay. So today we will talk and we will do lesson number 3.2 part 2. That is the second part of this particular lesson. So the last time we saw that this particular lesson is divided into two parts about Sayyid Heather Raza and Gon Dat which we have already just discussed now, I will not be repeating it. If you want to see the video or if you want to get information in detail, you can always go back and see the previous video that I have loaded about this particular lesson. We also will now take a look as a quick recap at the paintings which were drawn by Sayyid Heather Raza first and then we will look at the Gond tribal artwork. So these were the beautiful images which were drawn by Sayyid Heather Raza. Okay? And you can see that they all have different geometrical shapes and sizes and colors basically he made use of the orange color in different shades he used made use of blue color and the orange color in different shades then we will take a quick look at the painting which was done by the Gond tribal people okay and they were in total contrast with the paintings of Dr. of uh, Sayyid Heather Raza and they depicted only nature so you can see a lot of paintings about birds, animals, etc. So like I repeat, just, just like I just said, if you want to uh, see this in detail, you can go and watch the previous video. Now let us move on and let us talk about the English workshop part, where there is there are some exercises based on vocabulary, some exercises based on comprehension, and a few exercises based on English grammar. So we start with the very first exercise, which is based on vocabulary. So we are supposed to spot the error in the spelling of these words from the passage and you are supposed to rewrite them correctly. So this is an exercise which involves the use of the dictionary. Always children when you sit to study a lesson in English you can pick up the dictionary and keep it ready with you so that if you come across a word which you feel you have not understood or you do not, do not know in what context you should use it, then you can always check with the dictionary. So to learn a language, the dictionary is your best friend. So come on, I will leave you with this exercise and with your best friend, the dictionary. And let us try to see whether you are able to correct the spellings. And after pausing the video and after trying to find out the real, the correct answers, you can come back and check the answers with mine. So come on, let's check the answers now. So the first word is uh, renowned. Okay, so it is not N-O-U-N noun, but it is N-O-W-N noun, renowned. And then you have geometric. When we say, we do not say geometric, we say geometric. Alright, you can check out the spelling mistake there. The metric, M-A-T-R-I-C, is also metric when we say matriculation. But here it is, the different metric. Then you have painting with a P-A-I-N. And not a P E N T. Then you have village with a double L. Here we have a single L in village. Then features where there is a F E A 
and the FEE is rho. Even though we use FEE to talk about the fine that we pay or the amount that we pay to learn something, that is fee. But here it is FEA. Then you have figures. When you say cigars, it is CIGRS, but figures is FIGURES. That is what makes this language very interesting. Alright, then you have inner with an A, which is wrong. So the inner with the E, which is correct. Then you have medium, which is a simple spelling. All of us know the spelling of medium. Then you have tribal, T R I B A L, tribal. Mythology with M Y. Mythology means stories which might be true which might not be true. There are, no, there are no concrete evidence stating that these stories are 100% true. Then you have Earthern, E-A-R-T-H-E-N, Earthern. Then you have Decided, Circles. See the spelling of circles? So when you say, the way you say a word is also important sometimes when you write the spelling. Some people say, Circle, Circle is wrong. It is Circles. Okay? Then you have achieving where there is a lot of a possibility that we make mistakes sometimes. I also make a mistake with I and E. So it is an E which comes after the I. Not the I which comes after the E in achieving. And then we have different. Okay. So now I have given you all the answers over here. You can check out the answers that you have found from the dictionary. And let me give you a small assignment here. Try to find out five more figures, uh, five more words, which are sometimes misspelled. Okay? So you can use a dictionary and you can try to pick up a word and try to find out how people might be writing this word wrong. So this was the first exercise based on vocabulary. Let's move on and look at the second exercise. Now this is based on comprehension. That is, if you have read the passage properly, if you have tried to understand the meaning of the passage, then surely you will be able to do this passage, do this exercise. So come on, check with your textbooks. Try to see whether you will be able to arrive at these answers and then check with the answers that I am giving you. So what are the characteristic features of Raza's painting? So they are simple. Means they use geometric shapes. Now geometric shapes are a very simple concept. We have been learning about the circle, the square, the triangle, etc. Since we were in a very younger age. So it's very simple. Why? Because it is based on geometrical shapes and figures. Why are Raza's paintings striking? Striking means they are very attractive. Why are they striking? Because of the color combinations that they use. That he used to use. So the moment you look at it, you are automatically drawn towards the painting. Why are they captivating? See, there is a slight difference between striking and captivating. Striking means something attracts you for a moment. And something captivates you means it holds your attention. Okay? Sometimes you get attracted to something for a moment and then when you go close to it, when you inspect it properly, you realize, oh, it is worthless. But Raza's paintings were striking and captivating as well. Why were they captivating? Because of the compositions. So once you went close to the picture, and you started looking at the picture, you would continue to look at the picture. The pictures would captivate you. In a way, it would capture your attention. And what about the colors? The colors were a very characteristic feature of Raza's paintings. So we saw that he, which were the colors that he used? He used the basic colors of blue and orange. But he used them in such a wide variety of combinations that the painting would become striking, it would remain, remain, become captivating, at the same time it would remain simple. So these are some features of Raza's painting. Now let us move on and do another exercise in comprehension where you are supposed to complete the diagram. So I will not be doing all of them, I will touch upon a few and then you will have to complete the remaining on your own. So we will talk here about the Gonda. The previous comprehension exercise was about Raza's paintings. This is about part 2 of the lesson where we are going to talk about the Gond art. So, it was developed and it was preserved by the Gond tribal people 
who were inhabitants of the central part of India, that is the states of Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra, Telangana, etc. And the Gond people used the Gond art as a medium of recording, preserving what they used to see. Okay. Similarly, look at the other points. Preparing the canvas. So, what was the medium? How do, how would they paint? On what would they paint? So, you all know, if you have read the lesson well and if you have seen the previous video, that they used to draw on the earthen walls of their houses. Okay. Similarly, you have the other points also. How would they prepare the colors? How would they make the outlines? Etc. So, read the textbook well, read the text well and try to complete this particular diagram. So, this is the next assignment that I am giving you for the week. Moving on, let us come to the next exercise that is exercise 4 which is again an exercise in comprehension. So, when you have read the passage well, definitely you will be able to answer these questions as well. So, Raza's paintings do not depict life-like human figures or copies of scenes from his environment. So, his uh, paintings had nothing to do with the environment. Whereas, the other painting that we saw, the Gon painting, they were totally based on environment. Raza's paintings are done in the dash style. What style? Abstract style. Okay, not the concrete style. So, concrete style means to think, you draw about things which you can see around you. So, I can see right now in front of me, I can see my computer, I can see a water bottle, I can see a book. So, when I draw about these things, it is said to be the concrete style of drawing. When I am drawing about emotions, when I am drawing about bravery, and when I am drawing about things which you cannot see, then that is the abstract style of drawing, which is Raza's painting style. Raza's paintings are not inspired by any external factor. He used to draw inspiration from within himself to draw. Raza's paintings present images from his own inner mind. Raza's paintings radiate, radiate means they give out or they emanate peace and life at the same time. The dash became the core of Raza's paintings. The bindu or the point became the core of Raza's paintings. So when you draw, start to draw a circle, you draw the point first, isn't it? So that is way. That is the same way in which the bindu or a point became the cause of Raza's paintings. It became the heart of Raza's paintings. For an artist like Raza, his work or paintings are an effective medium of communication. So he used to draw things which came to his inner mind. So he wanted to tell people what things were there in his inner mind. So that means he wanted to communicate with the people. And he used his work or his paintings or his drawings as a means of communication with the people around him. So children, this was the next exercise in comprehension. Let us move on and let us look at some more exercises in comprehension or language study where we will talk about some grammar points now. So children, if you open the textbook, you will see that there are certain other exercises also based on comprehension, but they are relatively simpler ones so i would want you to do it on your own okay let us now directly come to the language study part which is exercise 11 from your textbook you are supposed to read about adjective clause adverb clause and noun clause there are two parts to this exercise you also have to find one example of each that is adjective clause Adverb clause and noun clause from the passage. So what I will do here is, I will guide you through the meaning of adjective clause, meaning of adverb clause and meaning of noun clause. I will show you examples which are not there in the passage. And then the, once you understand the concept, once you know what the examples are, then the assignment for you is, you will pick up at least two. In the textbook they have asked you to find one example, but try to pick up two examples of adjective clause, adverb clause and noun clause from the passage in the book. Okay, so come on, let's start by understanding what is the meaning of an adjective clause. But before that children, we have learned about clauses 
and we know that clauses are of two types so you have the main clause and you have the dependent clause so what is the main clause the main clause is that which does not need support from any other clause whereas here the clauses that we are talking about these are all subordinate clauses that is they cannot stand on their own they are all dependent clauses but we have already learned about them so i will not go back and discuss that we will directly go and try and see what are adjective clauses so what is an adjective clause an adjective clause is a dependent clause that functions as an adjective so it is a clause nevertheless it functions as an adjective it acts like an adjective so what is the work of an adjective we all know that an adjective modifies a noun or it gives more meaning to a noun or a pronoun so that is the exact duty of the adjective clause the adjective clause it acts like an adjective it means it modifies the noun or the pronoun let us look at a few examples here now the first example is students who study hard always get good results so who gets good results it is students which students students who study hard so this clause this group of words who study hard always identifies or it tells us more about the student which student the student who studies hard he only gets good result okay so here we have a clause which is acting like an adjective and telling us more about the noun that is the student so this is an adjective clause let us look at a few more examples of adjective clauses so what does an adjective clause do it modifies the noun so come on let's look at these examples i saw the man who robbed the bank so i saw the man so we are talking about the man the person here the noun is the man which man are we talking about the man who robbed the bank so it is a particular person so see i saw the man is a main clause it is the independent clause whereas who robbed the bank is the subordinate clause but apart from being the subordinate clause at the same time it is also giving you more information about man that is about the noun in the main clause that is why it is called as an adjective clause children sometimes grammar is a trick little bit tricky to understand okay so when i say something you're looking at the image on your screen and you're listening to me as well but the first time you may not be able to register what i'm saying so what you should do is pause the video go back again listen to what i'm saying and again try to see what i'm trying to explain okay as far as grammar is concerned you might need to do this so this is one example of an adjective clause let us look at some more examples the first sentence the cake that she bought was delicious so the cake was delicious is the independent clause or the main clause which cake so we are talking about a particular cake we are talking about the noun the cake we are describing it which cake <clears throat> that which she bought okay so the cake which she bought was delicious the people who live next door are good neighbors so who are good neighbors the people who live next door so we are identifying the people we are saying these people we are modifying the uh, meaning of the noun we are saying that this is the these are the people who are good not the other ones the game which was played yesterday ended in a tie which game ended in a tie the game which was played yesterday all right similarly we have i visited the town where they met all right so all the uh, words which are written in a different colored patch they are all adjective clauses the leaders whom we elect will commence work next week do you know the woman whose picture is in the magazine she will always remember the day when the accident happened 
so these are all examples of adjective clauses so now you know what are adjective clauses you know what the adjective clause looks like when it is used in a sentence so please read the textbook again and try to find out two examples of adjective clauses from the passage which is given moving on let's go to the next kind of clause that they want us to learn or read about and that is the adverb clause so you know what an adverb is an adverb tells us more about the verb or it tells us more about the adjective so an adverb clause is also that clause which modifies a verb or an adjective or sometimes even an adverb so the adverb clause is a subordinate or a dependent clause that modifies a verb an adjective or an adverb and like an adverb an adverb clause tells us where when how why to what extent and under what condition so in a way you can say that these are all the different types of adverb clauses adverb clause of place adverb clause of time manner reason etc so children let us look at some examples of the type of adverb clauses so like i told you we have adverb clause of time place cause contrast condition purpose result manner so an adverb clause of time will answer the question when okay let us look at an example sentence also so when there is a statement like this after the fruit is harvested it is sold in the market so when is the fruit sold in the market after the fruit is harvested so this is the subordinate adverb clause that is the adverb clause after the fruit is harvested then you have the adverb clause of place which answers the question where okay so you have this example sentence wherever there are computers there is microsoft software all right so you have there is microsoft software which is the main clause and wherever there are computers which is the subordinate clause that is the adverb clause it acts like an adverb then you have the cause why what caused it what was the reason and there you have i didn't call her because i am shy okay so now you must be knowing which is the adverb clause so i will not keep repeating and identifying the adverb clauses so try to identify the adverb clauses here now contrast how or what are the opposites so see the sentence although jay has a masters degree he works as a clerk store so he has got a masters degree he is a doctorate but what does, what work does he do he works as a clerk store then we have the adverb clause of condition where we talk about under what conditions so you if you save your money you will be able to go to college so that is a condition you have to if you want to go to college you will have to save your money then you have purpose means again why what is the reason so here you have the example she took a computer course so that she could get a better job okay so uh, cause and purpose are almost very similar to each other then you have the adverb clause of a result so what is the result of something here you have the example the stars are so far away that they can't be seen without a telescope so what is the result of the stars being so far away you can't even see them without a telescope okay finally you have manner where you talk about how all right and see the example ancient people used stars as if they were calendars so these are all different examples and types of adverb clauses moving on let us look at the third clause that we have to study for today and that is the noun clause this is again a subordinate clause now a noun clause it contains a subject and it contains a verb okay but like the adjective clause and the adverbial clause it cannot stand by itself as a sentence that is why it is a subordinate clause but it must be a part of the complete sentence if you look at the complete sentence this noun clause takes the place of a noun 
so where you should have written another noun you write the noun clause confused let us look at some examples see so noun clause refers to people it refers to things it refers to uh, manner it refers to place okay so uh, you know all know that names of people names of things names of places all these are nouns so noun clauses refer to all these things and they answer all these questions who whom whose which that whether so when a clause answers all these questions then we call it as a noun clause so for example see the examples here who that refer to people so there are some clauses which refer to people they caught the man who spied for china so he was a spy so instead of saying they caught the man who was a spy they are saying they caught the man who spied for china i lost the map that she gave me so what did i lose i lost the map which map the map that she gave me she complained to the man whose dog bit her okay so these are all examples of noun clauses christmas day is a day when people are happy so when are people happy on christmas day we visited the house where our father was born so these are all examples of noun clauses now what is your assignment again let me remind you you have to pick up a few examples of noun clause adverb clause and uh, adjective clause from your passage in the textbook so children this was the second part of the lesson lesson number 3.2 in your textbook reading works of art in the first video we discussed about the contents of the lesson and in the second video we did a quick recap of the content and we looked at the various uh, exercises based on vocabulary comprehension and grammar in the english workshop part so that is all as far as this particular lesson is concerned so children now you have watched the video so after you watch the video now you will have to complete a few simple tasks now you might have watched the video on your computers or your laptops or your mobile phones now after you watch the video what will you do you will please go to the description box which is given below the video So what is the description box? See the description box looks like this. All right? And after you go to the description box, you will see that there are a few questions there. Now what are these questions about? These questions are about the lesson that we just learned or the video that you just watched. So what will you do? You will think back properly about the lesson. and you will try and answer these questions and note down the answers in your notebook if you want okay after that we have another task waiting you will also click on the link which you will find in the description box to fill up the google form so now what is the google form children it is nothing but a simple form There are a few simple questions there about the video which you just saw and also about yourself. So these are the tasks now that you will have to complete after you watch each video. So children, wasn't that a very interesting lesson? I'm sure you learned a lot of new things in this lesson. If you have liked this video please hit the like button and also subscribe to my video so that you will get to see all the videos which I keep posting regularly